Proverbs 25 and verse 11, Solomon wrote, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. And the idea was that here was something very appetizing, very appealing, some delicious fruit in a silver bowl. And interestingly enough, this word fitly, a word fitly spoken, actually means a word on wheels. It means that the word, the idea, the concept that's being shared is not something awkward that has to be dragged into the conversation. It rolls right in. And those who are going to be involved in evangelism need to learn how to take the gospel and bring it in in a natural way into daily conversation. I want to tell a story about Richard Valpy, who was a, an eminent Greek scholar in England, 1754 to 1836. Uh, he was saved late in life, and as a kind of confession of his faith, he wrote a four-line verse that's quite well known. And you can read the whole story in uplook.org if you search life hyphen lines, lifelines, you'll read the story. But I want to highlight a few other details. The poem reads, In peace let me resign my breath, and thy salvation see. My sins deserved eternal death, but Jesus died for me. Dr. Valpy gave these words, handwritten on a little piece of paper, to his friend Dr. William Marsh, who was a leading evangelical minister in his day. Dr. Marsh's daughter, Catherine Marsh, was a remarkable woman. She was involved in taking the gospel to rough working class men, to sailors, to the poor, and worked among the cholera patients in London and actually set up a home near the sea for recovering cholera patients. She was well known for her simple but powerful presentation of the gospel. I'm going to tell the story of, about Valpy's poem, but let me just tell you one little story about Catherine Marsh. This is a sheet from her book, which is called English Hearts, English Hands. In 1853, about 3,000 men were called to London to dismantle the Crystal Palace, which had been built in Hyde Park for the Great Exhibition in London, and they were to reassemble it on Sydenham Hill. About 200 of these workmen were lodged in the village of Beckenham, which was where Catherine lived. And on a Sunday evening, she felt constrained to go down and share the gospel with some of these men. She knew one man who had been sick, and she had prayed for his recovery, and she went to the home where he was housed, but they told him that uh, he wasn't there. She said, but if I come in and you give me a chair, perhaps I can wait, and eventually he will come. And so she went in, in spite of the fact that they said, we're a rough crowd, she said, well, of course, you won't be rough to me. And they dusted off a chair, and she sat down. She immediately began to share with them the gospel, asked if any of them had been to church that day and none of them had been. As she told the gospel, a young man named Edward Perry said, well, that's a great story, but uh, I don't believe it because uh, I don't believe the Bible. And she said, why do you not believe the Bible? What's the reason for your infidelity? And he said, because I read in the Bible that God is a God of love and yet he has prepared from all eternity a place of torment for us poor, pitiful creatures. In my Bible, she replied, I have never read anything of the sort. I read that God is love, and that the Lord Jesus Christ will say at the judgment day, to those who have believed and obeyed him, Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But to those who have rejected his salvation and despised his laws, he will say, Depart ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared 
for the devil and his angels. If man chooses to reject God's offer of mercy through a Savior and to prepare himself for that place of punishment, he has no right to charge God with the result of his own sin and willful madness. And that evening, this young man, Edward Perry, put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, back to my story about Dr. Valpy and this little poem. That little piece of paper that a Valpy wrote these four lines on and gave to Dr. Marsh were passed on to the Earl of Roden. The Earl of Roden, Robert Jocelyn, was the brother-in-law of Lord Powerscourt. Many of you may be familiar with Lady Powerscourt, who arranged Bible conferences to be held at the Powerscourt estate outside of Dublin, where many of the truths that had been lost to the church were rediscovered, like the centrality of Christ and the imminent return of the Lord Jesus and the weekly breaking of bread and the priesthood of all believers and so on. Robert Jocelyn, the Earl of Roden, was a college roommate of Lord Byron and Sir Robert Peel, the man who gave the name to the Bobbies. He was the founder of the London police force. The Earl of Roden lived in Tollymore House. He had put this little poem written on this piece of paper, handwritten by Dr. Valpy. He had put it on his mantelpiece in his study. Some years later, after it had hung there for quite a long time, Major General Thomas William Taylor, who was one of the heroes of Waterloo, was visiting in this uh, Tollymore house. And he stood peering at the words. And after quite some time, the Earl of Roden said to him, Boy, you're going to have those four lines memorized soon. He said, Actually, I already do. And he said, These four lines have opened up to me the teaching concerning God's salvation. And some years later, when Major General Taylor was dying, the medical doctor who attended his deathbed told the Earl of Rawdon that in his dying days, he repeatedly quoted these words, In peace let me resign my breath, and thy salvation see, my sins deserved eternal death but Jesus died for me. Now, as I say, there are other stories associated with this four-line poem. You can read about them at life-lines if you search for that at uplook.org. So just a little reminder that a word fitly spoken is something that should be delicious. It should be appealing. As we share the gospel, we have the most wonderful message in the world. And we have the greatest incentive for sharing it. And the human heart has the greatest need for it. And God has paid the greatest price for it. And Christ has offered it to the greatest number of people. Go into all the world, he said, and preach the gospel to every creature. May God help us to have words fitly spoken when we are telling the story of the Savior's love. My sins deserved eternal death but Jesus died for me.